Our presenter for the 940 time slot is Naomi Ray Lynch. She is from Mechanicburg and will be sharing with us her capstone. Use your loading for wheelchair bound dogs. Please join me in welcoming her. Good morning, everyone. My name is Naomi Ray Lynch, and I am here to present to you what I have been working on for the past few months for my capstone. Now, with everyone having to stay home for the time being, it is nice to have company, whether it be family or, in this case, pets. We've all had experience with a pet. We either have one ourselves or know family or friends that have a pet. According to the National Pet Owner Society, about 75% of the U.S. population owns a pet, and about $62.75 billion have been spent in the year 2016 for the care of these pets. Demographics include baby boomers from the ages of 55 to 64 and millennials which, in fact, millennials are known as the number one pet owning generation, as now there are many services that give more high quality goods and food to, these, to the care of these pets. So what kind of pets are being, o being owned by people? Well, according to this pie chart, about 63.4 million households own a dog, 42.7 million households own a cat, and 23.3 million households own other pets, meaning rodents, birds, and reptiles. Now this seem, now this is good, isn't it? There are many pets that have good homes and loving owners. However, there are those that are without such privilege. These are the special needs pets. Now, who are these? Well, they were, they're pets that require extra attention due to conditions they were either born with or developed throughout life. These conditions include missing limbs, like this little three-legged dog in the image, uh, medical conditions, and old age. Oh, terribly sorry. I have a dog in here as well. <laughs> I was hoping she would be quiet, but. <laughs> and mobility problems. Because of these conditions, it takes them up to two years longer to find a home. This is because people are often off put due to these conditions as they are unaware of how much more care needs to be put into or how much more money needs to be spent to make sure they're happy. And unfortunately, this means they are often put down. Fortunately, there are many, there are many groups that are working towards getting them good homes. One such example is the owner of this pet here. This is Snoop. He, is, he has been rescued from a shelter, has many medical issues, has mobility issues, and according to his owner, who makes an effort to adopt pets that have been in the shelter for far too long, there are many things that are missing on the market that could help that could help give them an easier to help give Snoop an easier life. Now, why does this matter? Well, it is thanks to many advances in the medical field that both humans and pets are living longer. Whereas if you're a human and you're getting older or something happens, you can easily find access to the, products you need. However, for pets, they are not as lucky. Now, moving on to my brief. My brief is to help mobile impaired dogs get adopted sooner by making assisted products more easily accessible and easier to use. How I'm going to do this is to design the adjustable and classable wheelchair for dogs that provides what other wheelchair companies lack with their product. Now, in order to understand what is lacking in the, wheel, in the wheelchair market, we will look into current products that exist. Now, there are many different sites that custom make wheelchairs. One such is Eddie's Wheels. 
there is also best friend mobility that makes dog wheelchairs. And then there is the DIY, the DIY market that on YouTube has a plethora of videos that can help you make your own dog wheelchair with many everyday objects. However, there are many pain points with this. As always, you're, you will need measurements to work with in order to make a wheelchair for your pet. However, each company and each individual has different methods of doing so. Some of these requirements include weight, length between the leg joints, the shoulder joint and the hip joint, the height of the dog, how wide they are, and then there are many other different, and there are many other ways. Some include the girth, which is the circumference around the dog's chest, at like the widest point of their body. So apart from that, I went to some more research. What else can be improved? Now I went through different I went through different phases. I've seen, I've also looked into videos on how to put one put a wheelchair onto a dog, and I found something that is integral for my project. With the larger breeds, two people are often needed to put the dog into the wheelchair. Well, if it's a smaller dog, this isn't as much of an issue. But if you have a bigger breed, say a Weimaraner, this can be a this can be an issue as not as they are bigger, heavier dogs, and not everyone can lift them. <laughs> so with that, I move uh, moving to my design principles. What what is needed for this project to work? What needs what this wheelchair needs to stand out is a consistent method of measurement, easier setup for large breed dogs, and an appealing design. With that, I moved on to an initial ideation phase. So here's just some general initial ideation to figure out how it would look. However, this can only go so far without understanding the whole depth of how a dog wheelchair works. So I moved on to a rapid prototyping phase to figure, so with a model, I made a wheelchair and a vest to see how the dimensions would work and what the site what measurements were needed and with that i moved on to a form study which is just a quick sketch out session where i drew different forms and with this image on the right this is what i decided to go on with into my modeling phase now there were many steps with modeling. One of these was the component that allowed the wheelchair to be able to collapse for easy setup. Now here's a little bit of my component. Now there is a button that allows that you have to press in order for the wheelchair to fold and to stand up. And then with that, there is a silicone seal for the part that moves as well. Now this would mean that dog hair will get into it. So I have it where you can remove that, this panel right here in order to clean out the, in order to clean out the inside. Now with that, I moved on to the rest of my model. Now it's not directly shown in here, but one of the original things that had to be changed was as I modeled the wheel, I had the axle just go right into the pole straight, into the leg straight on. Now that interferes with the structural integrity of the wheelchair. So I fixed it so it tapers into the axle of the wheelchair, of the wheel. And another thing is, since I have an adjustable bar right here. I would. I was advised to make to add a second adjustable bar for stabi stability. So then I made a rendering for the collapse version. 
However, as I did that, I realized the wheels were a bit too, were a tad too big. And this would make it much hard, this would make it much harder for someone to put the wheelchair onto the vest. So with that, I moved on to my current iteration where I had modeled the wheels considerably smaller to make it much easier for the setup. Now moving on to the setup, I have a journey map for the now first you would put the vest onto the dog and then you would put the wheelchair onto the vest that's on the dog. Now how you do that is there are Velcro strips and you loop them through the brackets and wrap around sticking it onto the Velcro, onto the vest and Velcro. Now some features that are included with this is that with a button press, the wheelchair can collapse for easy setup and can stand up straight so that the dog is able to stand up. Now with this, I have solved the brief by adding Velcro straps that can connect to the vest in a collapsible Collapsible feature so that you can get the wheelchair onto the dog onto a bigger deep breed dog without much difficulty. And this comes with a simple one press button and an adjustable, and like I said earlier, an adjustable mechanism with a case that can be openable for easy cleanup. Any questions? Ray, great job. Yeah, um, we have one question so far. Uh, the wheels, uh, is it possible to change them out if you, for instance, wanted to go on a hiking trail? Uh, is it possible to add all-terrain wheels? So when I had, when I had designed it early, when I had been working through this earlier, I had I had decided to use a bit more of the kind of like the tire base to wheels for a little more all terrain, like thicker wheels. Okay, and uh, then. We have a question here. Did you consider putting the bracing over the top of the dog's back rather than going behind the dog? Seems like there could be some practical issues with the dog's tail going, uh, or the dog's tail or the dog going to the bathroom. Mm, that's a good question. Uh, I think that will be something I could continu continue to work on and develop. Can the dogs lie down while they're in the wheelchair? I know this is something that you and I talked about a little bit yesterday, yeah. but uh, is it possible for them to lie down? Uh, it might require, well, since from my research, they are saying to make sure to have, uh, to watch over them while they're in the wheelchair. I mean, they can, but you'd have to have to, eh, you'd have to press the button for it to fold again. Uh, what kind of material are you thinking for, for the vest? Uh, and Jim wanted to congratulate you on the low fidelity prototypes. <laughs> I think right now the, it's kind of like a fabric, uh, like, like fabric that's currently used for vests now. Okay. So in the beginning, you mentioned that wheelchairs in the market need two people to put the dog in place, uh, one to hold the dog in place and one to strap the dog in. Do you still need two people to put the dog in the wheelchair with this? Uh, no. But... I believe the idea is, uh, and, and we were talking about this the other day, um, yeah. 
that uh, when that you have an individual user who has the dog lying down, that user can strap the vest around the dog and then bring the wheelchair around them and strap the wheelchair into the into the vest. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Uh, then something else that I know we've discussed in the past, uh, when the wheelchair is in its collapsed position, are you relying solely on the strength of the user to lift the dog into the upright position? Uh, is there a way the dog can help with this? Uh, are there other mechanisms that can help with getting uh, the wheelchair in the upright position again? Well, when we were, I was working through the collapsible part, I, I had it where it could be kind of like spring loaded. So it's like, there's like a pressure load to return it to the standing mode once the button's pressed. Well, it's not gonna strongly jerk it to, it's just going to move it back into the standing form. Okay. And then are there wheelchair designs right now for if the front legs of the dog are uh, are the problem and yeah. if not is there a way that this could be adapted to that yes there currently are a few of them that are out in the market okay uh question do you have a personal connection to wheelchair bound dogs that drove this project um i have not met one but I ha I'm just close to animals in general, so I have a bit of a <laughs> so I have a bit of a kind heart to the pets that aren't adopted as often. So if I did if I did have to, I definitely would adopt yeah. one that needs. Ray, anyone to. anyone that knows you knows that you have a kind heart towards animals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, you have, how many Weimaraners do you have? Uh, three. Three? Yeah, one, and of then, them, one of them went, one of them was barking. It was a, during the presentation, I was like, Yes. Well, as long as you're sleeping, it'll be fine. And then she heard something and started barking. <laughs> and then you also have a, another dog as well? Uh, Dachshund, well, the Dachshund's my sister's dog. Okay. But she's been doing other stuff, so we're kind of taking care of her, and sure. not a puzzle. Um, have you thought about a way to prevent the dog's back legs from dragging on the ground? Oh, yes, I forgot to mention, but there is a leg strap that, a back leg strap that connects to the, that is attached to the vest that can, Yeah, if you can see right here, there is like there is a leg strap that can detach and reattach in order to keep the dog's legs from dragging on the ground. And then there were also there were also ideas for I think they call them stirrups that keep the dog's legs from dragging on the ground. Mm -hmm. Now this mechanism would only be necessary for medium to large sized dogs, correct? Do you have, uh, or were you planning on producing wheelchair, adjustable wheelchairs for smaller dogs as well? Uh, yes, yes. This can, well, this does apply mainly to the bigger dogs. This can also apply to like smaller breeds. Okay, so how many sizes were you thinking of producing? A small, medium, or large. Maybe an extra small if it's really needed, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. I think that about does it for the questions. Ray, great job. Thank you so much, everyone. If you would join me in congratulating her on a job well done. <laughs>